Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 60 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I had a lot of fun the last two episodes building some serious Thumbcraft automation. I hazard to say it's one of the best automations I've ever done related to Thumbcraft. Maybe, I don't know. I've done some pretty crazy automations though. Uh, but I'm really proud of this one because it's both kind of like straightforward and simple, but at the same time, it's very, very efficient and it just works. Uh, so remember last episode, we got Alimentum automated and uh, we set it up so that the alchemical furnaces all around our base will always keep a steady stack of Alimentum in them. And if we look around here, we'll see that all these alchemical furnaces do in fact have a bunch of Alimentum inside. They're all filled up. So just by sitting back and relaxing, we've got plenty of the stuff. Uh, now what I'd like to do and we also set up for Nitor. So for example, I want to keep a certain stack of Nitor here. Let's say 32. Does that sound like a good number? So I'm going to bump that up to 32. That sounds cool. And if we go downstairs, we should see Nitor starting to get cooked up right about in here. Hey, look at that. Perfect timing. Uh, better take my magnet off and drop any Nitor I get into the AE system. Otherwise, it'll get confused. Uh, but you can see everything's just kind of running the way it should. Sweet, right? So, Nitor is cooking automatically, Alimentum is cooking automatically, and this nifty contraption is helping to get this thing running quickly. Uh, this episode, I'd like to do a few more automation things with Thomcraft, and if we wrap that up before the end of the episode, we'll start working on something new. But I want to make sure that the world is nice and stable for the episode 60 world download, which will occur at the end of this video. So, uh, let's take a look around and just make sure that everything is nice and stable and ready to run, uh, because I want to make sure you guys are set for when the world download happens. Sound like a plan? All right, so let's get started taking a look at what we're going to do. All right, guys, I want to do a little bit of research, but before I jump into that, I wanted to note that the Botanurgist Inkwell, remember we checked that out previously, you just drop one of these uh, scribing tools into a mana pool from Batania, and you get an uh, inkwell that can be recharged with mana. So that's pretty neat. Let's go take a look real quick. Actually, I can just pop over there. Uh, just drop it into the uh, mana pool, and it should recharge, I think. There we go. Cool. So, save you a little bit of ink. But I'm going to do the uh, research off camera as usual, and we'll be right back. Well, guys, I was out and about exploring because there's something in very particular that I'm looking for that's also exceedingly hard to find. And I found an example of magic gone wrong. Uh, I found a tainted biome. Uh, this is one of the things that Thorncraft can spawn. It's uh, not a particularly common biome, but the, uh, the, the negative side of magic kind of takes over the lands and does a lot of nasty negative stuff to it. Uh, so luckily this is kind of far away from my base and not something I have to worry about at the moment, but I just wanted you guys to be aware that it exists. I'm going to continue looking for the thing that I'm looking for, and if I can't find it, I'm going to go about doing what I want to do in a slightly uh, different way. So we'll come back in a minute. All right, guys. So there's a couple ways to get what I'm going to call an Uber node um, from Thalmcraft. And the way to approach this is there's, there's really, like I said, two ways to go. You can either A, find a hungry node in the wild, which I just spent two hours looking for and couldn't find. Some people said they found them within 10 minutes. Other people say they searched forever and never find them. I searched forever and never found one. So they're super rare, but they're also very dangerous in that they will suck up any blocks and entities, including the player, and do lots of damage to them, and you could die from them. And when you die, you might actually lose all your stuff forever because it'll suck it up and destroy it. So hungry nodes are bad. You kind of want to avoid them. But if you find one and you can be like you know pretty good about it and control it, well you can get a really powerful node out of it. Unfortunately, I couldn't find one. So what I'm going to do is pop that over there. Come back to me, my friends. Thank you. Let's also make sure my magnet's back on. Cool. And let's head back and see what we're going to do with this thing. In fact, um, yeah, we'll head over there. All right, so I found another aura node here, and I'm also going to teleport this thing. Oh, hey, why didn't you go? Hmm. All right, I have to figure out why that's not teleporting. I'll be right back. All right, let's try this one. Huh, that's weird. There we go. Got it teleported over. So, what do we got here? We've got two aura nodes next to each other. This one has Perdito and Water in it, and has a total of about 96. And this one has 
Aqua and Ignis. That's a total of about 106. So I want to say that this node here is slightly larger than this node. What happens is when two nodes are next to each other and they don't have any stabilization stuff on them, they will start to merge with each other. And over time, uh, we're going to wind up with some, there we go, we just saw a little zap. Cool. So if we take a look at one of these guys, uh, I don't know, let's see, I think... Oh, there we go. Aqua's getting zapped in there. You just saw the maximum amount of uh, Aqua available in this node go up. And this node lost a little bit of Aqua. So this guy's going to continue to absorb some of the aspects that are in this one. Now, it's not going to be a pure direct uh, you know, transfer. We're not going to wind up with 50 per dito in this node. We'll probably wind up with quite a bit less. Um, but that's okay. What's going to happen is that this node is going to slowly be uh, consumed by this one. So you can see we just lost a per dito in there but we didn't get one here yet. Oh, but there we go, we just did get one. So now this node has a little bit of Perdito in it. Cool. So we're gonna let these nodes hang out and do their thing. And uh, I'm gonna move a couple other nodes over here because I want to basically um, merge a bunch of nodes. And to do that is gonna be pretty easy. We just bring a couple nodes over here, we get them uh, you know, set up, and that's all you need to do. So we'll come back in a minute when it's time uh, to see how these are making out. I'm going to let these hang out here. Um, I think this area should be chunk loaded. So yeah, there's a chunk loader in the base there, and that should be covering this spot, right? As long as we have this area chunk loaded, it should be cool. Let's see. Yeah, we've got seven chunk radius. That's definitely going to keep this area loaded. So we'll come back here in a minute and see how our merging of nodes goes. I'm going to go find a few other nodes and start, you know, moving stuff over. All right, guys, so I've set up a few nodes here. And again, I'm just right outside my base. It doesn't matter really where you do this. And we'll wind up moving the big king node eventually to where we want it to be. You'll notice that the one in the center is definitely eating the smaller ones. Uh, remember, larger ones will eat from smaller ones. So that means that this guy, he's pretty small at this point. He's probably not eating anything. This guy is larger than this one. So he's eaten up a little bit of the air and terror that's in there. That's okay. Uh, this Ordo node is also pretty small, so he's getting eaten up. And this guy, he might be sapping a few things. He was a decent size. He's also got Instrumentum in there, which is cool. Remember, um, there's uh, there's Primal Aspects, but then there's also the Combo ones. The Combo ones are going to be neat because I think they'll break down into their Primals when we set this up for energy um, creation. So what I want to do is have a really large node that basically is going to be configured to act just like this guy. So this is just a big earth node, right? Like he's great at being an earth node, but he doesn't have anything else going on for him. I want to have a node that has all the aspects and a decent number of them. Uh, the calculation, by the way, is the square root of the current number of aspects that's in the node becomes the, the speed. So I want to get somewhere around, if we could find uh, our way towards getting maybe five or six. So that means we're going to want like 25 or 36 of each aspect type to be inside the ore node, that would kind of be ideal. So it's gonna take a while. Like clearly this guy, uh, these, these things aren't moving quickly, right? They're not rapidly sucking down stuff. And I don't think there's any way to speed this process up. There's no way to increase it because it's just, you know, standard, um, you know, randomization right like random ticks will eventually suck it all up but when we come back here in a little bit um we should see this aura node completely uh being the one the last man standing basically he'll be the largest and then i'll bring a few more nodes over and we'll let them continue to merge and merge and merge until we eventually have one node that's really big and large so it's going to take a while luckily this is youtube so you guys get to uh have me come back in a few minutes and see what happens. So we'll keep an eye on this thing. We'll come back in a few minutes. I'm gonna work on some other stuff probably while I'm waiting for that node to merge. But my goal is to have a pretty good node set up before I release episode 60's world download so that you guys don't have to wait um, the really long time that it's gonna take. All right, we'll be back. All right, guys, we're back just to briefly give you an update. I've been uh, moving these things around a little bit. And you can see here that this node is almost gone. He's only got one point left. Remember, when you completely drain a node, it might regenerate a point and it might not. Uh, so there's a possibility that next time this node gets zapped, it'll disappear completely. Or it might not. And uh, it might regen itself. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. Eventually, it will be destroyed completely. Uh, you can see I did move a few more nodes over here. And this aura node in the center is continuing to be the king of the hill. Uh, a couple other nodes, like I said, this one here is getting it. Uh, this guy, what is he? Is he a fading node? Oh, yeah, he is. Look at that. Cool. So, oh, did we just lose? Yeah, there's zero Perdito in there. So that thing's getting pretty low. 
And this guy's almost empty too, this Oranode. He's only got seven air left in him. So really not actually taking that long, uh, but we are eventually you know, winding down and, and destroying most of the nodes here. So we'll come back, like I said, in a few minutes and see this uh, node in the center, hopefully have a decent size to him. And I'm gonna continue to feed him until, like I said, we get around like the 30s, maybe 40s. Uh, let's see, if we wanted six, we'd want 36. And if we wanted seven, we'd want um, 49. So yeah, not too bad. Um, you know, of course, the longer time we spend feeding him, the larger he'll get eventually, and uh, that would be cool, but at, at some point it starts to get ridiculous, right? Like, if we wanted 8, we'd need 64, and if we wanted 9, we'd need 81. So because it's square root, you rapidly get to the point where continuing to feed this thing is going to be, like, way more trouble than it's worth, right? Like, one more cent of for, you know, going from, uh, you know, 64 to 81, like, that's a huge leap. So, we'll see. I'll come back in a few minutes. All right, guys, we are back, and as you can see, some time has passed, and some nodes have disappeared. So this is what we expected to happen, right? Nodes will eventually disappear, and they will eventually lose certain aspects within themselves, and uh, overall... <laughs> Well, this guy's still turning out to be the victor so far, as we expected. So this one still has plenty of aura to be zapped out of it. And you can see, I think it just lost a uh, particular type of aspect. So that's cool. These guys, yeah, this one's low on earth. He's still got a little water and instrumentum left. We'll kind of let this sit here for a little while still. And while that's going, I want to start work on another bit of automation. One of the items that's really a nuisance to craft, and I'm going to have to change up the way this works a little bit, so that's why I'm going to do this more on camera, uh, is the pure, uh, I think it's called crystal, right? Um... Let's see, a uh, balance shard, that's the one. So remember, balance shard, you need like a bunch of different aspects and a shard, like they're not terrible to craft, but they're definitely a nuisance and you need a lot of them. So I wanna auto craft that, but the thing is that balance shard, and if we take a look in our Thumbonomicon here, we'll see that the balanced shard, which I believe is covered under alchemy, maybe, basic alchemy, right? Yeah, um, needs five aspects. And so far, our automation step can only handle four aspects. So we're going to have to upgrade this with a new uh, Arcane Alembic. And we're going to see how well we can automate this with a five aspect uh, alchemy component. So let me craft and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to toss one nether rack into a furnace here and get myself some nether brick. The nice thing about nether brick is it has just fire on it. So the combination that I'm going to go with here, and I want to teach the A system how to make this. So let's put this into here. We're going to clear this out. We'll say that one nether brick yields one, or one nether rack yields one nether brick. Cool. And you're going to go in the interface that's on the alloy smeltery that smelts non-alloys. This one, right? This is what makes glass and stone. So you go in there. So now I should be able to request nether brick to get created. I'll request 10 of them just for fun and start. And we'll see them start to show up here. Cool. It's working beautifully. I like it. So we'll let that cook. Uh, meanwhile, what I want to do is select the items that we're going to use to craft. So let's take a look. Uh, cobblestone is a nice material because it has one Perdito and one Terra. Okay, so that's good. Um, Sugarcane is great because it has water and air, but it also has Herba. So what I want to do is break that down. So we're going to do that. And then we're also going to use um, some, yeah, nether brick and an order shard. Okay, so all I need now, we've got Terra, Perdito, Ignis, Air and Water, plus the Order Shard, should give us the pure thing, right? So before we can actually get this going, I'm going to have to clear this, and I'm going to need some more blank patterns. I think I crafted 10 more. Missing. Certus Quartz Crystal. Really? Am I low on Certus? That would not be ideal. Wow, I am. Okay, time to mine. Where are you at? There? Okay. Run a cycle, please. We'll let that cook up for the time being. Let's get ourselves um, at least like two or three of these guys. That's doable. So start that up. And let's get... I've got one sugar cane, so let's go drop it in there manually so we can get the shards that we need. So if we drop a piece of sugar cane in here, that'll cook up, and these things should all start spinning. See? There's water, there's the herba, and there's the earth. Cool. And that'll all get sucked into... Oh, and there's air. Cool. Oh, right. We're uh, probably also cooking up to replace the alimentum that we just burned up. 
That's the other thing that's being cooked. Because automation. <laughs> Love it. All right, let's check out what we've got by way of crystallized essentia. So we're going to say that sugarcane yields the following essentia types. We should have aqua, air, and herba. Cool. So we can encode that pattern. So one sugarcane creates the three crystallized essences, herba, air, and aqua. Cool. And we can put that in the interface terminal on this guy. Sweet. Then we should be able to do uh, the pattern. We should have our blank patterns by now. And we'll say one air plus one aqua plus one cobblestone plus one nether brick, right? Fire, Perdito, Terra, Aqua, Air, plus an order shard will yield. I don't know that I have any pure or balanced shards, as it were. We might have some over here. Though I might have, oh good, we do. So I can put this into the pattern as the output. and encode that guy. Meanwhile, let's cross our fingers and see if this is gonna work. So let's go over to our thing that makes nitor and alimentum, right? So that's gonna go here, our balance shard. And then we can pop on over and see what we can do. So the other thing I'm gonna do here is place this guy. Is this the one that's doing? Where's this thing? Cool. Uh, you do coal and you're doing the crystallized essence. All right, so I'm gonna put this over here. So yeah, that should be cool. So we'll tell this guy, whitelist match metadata. I need to do NBT data. Let's see if I have an advanced filter handy. I do, cool. So this guy had torch and Perdito, huh? Torch. Let's craft a Perdito shard real quick. These guys should be cooking. Cool. So you're going to get out of there and this guy goes in. And you're going to, I should probably just clear what's in there right now. Whitelist, ignore metadata, ignore NBT. We can place this in there. And what that means is that, um, there we go, ignore those guys. And torch. Neat. I guess when you place it in there, okay. Ignore, ignore, cool. Everybody's happy. Whitelist, ignore, ignore, Perdito. What that means is it should put any crystallized essence into here. So any and all crystallized essences that hit the pipe should land in there, right? That's kind of what that should mean. And we should have our balance chart in there. So all three crystallized essences can land in there. And the other one I'll put in there is, let's put some stuff away for the time being. We'll say nether brick and cobblestone or the other things we were doing, right? So nether brick can go in there. So what we'll wind up with is we'll have ignis, water, and air. And then over here, we'll have terra and perdito. So this guy should have cobblestone. And this guy should get the order shard. Cool. And if I configured this correctly, everything should work. The only other piece I need is to run some Essentia tubes from here to here so that can pipe in. In theory, that should all be good. The only other piece of this puzzle is to throw this in here and balance shard, cool. Oh, we need two of each for the balance shard, okay. So I should upgrade that pattern to be two of each. Good to know. Derpy Dyer, 
sharpen it up again. Come back with me. We need to reconfigure this pattern. Yoink. Is it a shift click? There we go. That clears out the pattern. So two air. Two herba. Two nether brick. Two cobblestone. And the order shard will yield a balance shard. Cool. So now for the real test, will this work? You ready? Here goes nothing. We're going to request the crafting of a balanced shard. We'll just do one for now and start. So this thing should have gotten some stuff that should have gotten in there. We'll take off our ring of magnetization so that nothing gets confused. All that stuff's going. Now these guys are running, doing the cobblestone, Perdito Terra, Fire, Herba. How'd you get Herba? You should not have gotten Herba. Did I do the wrong crystallized essence type or what? Water. Did I derp again? You guys would notice. <laughs> I did. Come on, Dyer. Don't be so derpy. Let's take out this and put this one in. And this we can shift click and erase. So that mostly worked until I derped. Okay. Let's request one of these real quick. And while that's going, we'll pop over here. We'll go down here. You are going to cook up two waters, please. There we go. Nice. All right, so that should work. Everybody's cool? Everybody should be cool. Let's request 10 of these guys. Start. So everything should cook, and we'll watch here for a minute to make sure that I'm right about this. But it should run smoothly enough. So you can see everything over there working, everything on the left working, doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's cooking up the sugar cane as expected. Cobblestone's going in, fire, water, air. Nice. I think that's working, guys. I'm very pleased. All right. Gonna let that run for a minute and we'll come back and hopefully have 10 extra order shards in the AE system. I'll let you know how it works out. And then I'm gonna configure the thing upstairs to keep like, I don't know, 10 at all times should be plenty. So, so far everything's running perfectly. Just keep in mind that we have now reached our limit of um, things that we can do in here. So we'll need another pneumatic matrix if we wanna have other stuff or we'll need another one of these configurations. But Let's see, shards, we're up to nine, so everything's running pretty smoothly. I don't think we have any complaints here, right? So this stuff's all wrapping up. I think this is the last set of everything. We can see some herbas cooking away, some mortar and herba, lots of herba left, it looks like. That's ticking down, nice. Over here, are we pretty much done? I think we are. Yeah, we've got 11 now. I think we've got one more to go. 
Yep, there it goes. The last one's cooking up now. Sweet. All right, guys, we will be right back. Oh, by the way, I just killed a warped zombie. You can see it right there. Um, and he dropped a rare treasure. This is a new feature of Thalmcraft. They have named monsters. And when you get the rare treasure, sometimes there's cool stuff inside, like gold coins. We're going to see what those are for in the future. But I just want to show that on camera real quick. All right, how's my aura nodes doing over here? Ah, nice. Another one has been destroyed. Uh, this one's getting awfully low, as is this one. He's pretty much almost gone. He's doing pretty good. I need more Perdito. This one has a decent amount of Perdito, though. He should start getting drained more now. He was kind of the second largest of the bunch, so he was starting to drain other ones. So now that everything else is pretty much gone, he should start being drained pretty quickly, and we'll get more Perdito in here. We're going to need more of pretty much everything except Aqua and Ignis. So I'm going to let this run still off camera and come back to let you guys know how we made out. All right, guys, just came to check on my quarry at the moment. Everything seems to be running pretty well. Uh, no major complaints with this thing. You can see I did wind up throwing a couple um, of the uh, sponges on here. That's working out pretty well for us. If they do run into lava, though, they'll get destroyed, so keep that in mind. Um, the other thing to note, by the way, is in version 1.04 of the pack. I don't know if you guys may have encountered this or not, but Annihilation Planes are a little buggy. I personally went and grabbed the latest version of um, Applied Energistics that fixes the mess up with Annihilation Planes. They kind of break one block at a time instead of doing the whole row at once, which really makes this quarry super inefficient. So I manually updated, um, but version 1.05 of the pack will have the latest version. So I just wanted you guys to be aware if you were playing uh, in this world and you had version 1.04 of the pack, it's a little bit of a bug. You can go get the manual update, but you won't be able to play on any servers unless they've updated as well. If I were you, I would just wait for 1.05, which will fix that issue. Sound like a plan? So I want to go check on my, that's right. Every time I take those uh, ender rails, for some reason my angel wings stop working until I drop them and pick them back up. So still pretty much almost done here. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna need more nodes. I'm gonna go find more nodes. All right, guys, so I ran around and got myself some air and Perdito order, uh, nodes. Do want to find another one with a good amount of Ordo in it, but I think we're getting close to uh, having a pretty finalized node here. Uh, what I want to do, though, is instead of finishing the node on camera here, because I want to have a large amount of aspects and because I want you guys to have access to the map when it's full, I'm going to spend some time between this episode and next constantly fueling this aura node. Um, now, if I'm being super technical about this, the best way to do this is one node at a time. So like one node gets filled, fills this thing up and once it's totally gone, place another node there. Because what's happening is like this one's draining from this one and there's a chance it's lost. And then this one will eventually drain from this one. There's another chance it's lost. So technically the most efficient way to do this is one at a time, but that's also the slowest way. And since aura nodes are really not in short supply, I'm totally cool, like, just putting a bunch of them here and letting it all flow into the big one and then, you know, doing it again a, a few at a time, like I said. So I'm going to wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time, and we're going to put this giant aura node to use. Uh, I've got a few things in mind that I want to make, uh, and most of them are going to require some energy courtesy of that aura node that we've got. So again, uh, we're going to basically be um, doing a similar setup to this thing, but instead of just having Terra, it's gonna have all the primal aspects in it. And that's gonna allow for a very powerful and awesome node. For now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Automated balance shards is a cool thing. I'm really excited that we got that done because balance shards have always been kind of a nuisance to craft. And now we've got a bunch of them. So I did set that up and it probably auto crafted a bunch more for me. Yes, there's 15 more in the system. Um, because I wasn't quick enough, I said keep 15 in here and then it started crafting 15 because I had them all in my inventory. So, oh well. But for now, yep, time to wrap up. So I hope you guys enjoyed checking that out. We will come back next time. Lots more fun stuff to work on. Uh, we'll do some more Thalmcraft. I do want to explore. There's a lot of new things in Thalmcraft that you guys haven't even seen on Forgecraft, really. Um, there's uh, You've seen little hints of them here and there, but there's definitely some really cool stuff that I want to check out. All right, guys, take it easy.